Hi, this is Mari Mahoval, the Hermanos Brilakis, and this is case 146 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of left main stenting using the DK crust technique through a core valve. The patient was a 71-year gentleman with a previous tower with a 29mm core valve. He also had percutaneous coronary intervention of the lady twice, so there are two layers of stents, who presented with unstable angina and was found to have significant instant restenosis of the ostium of the lady distal left main as well as the ostium of the circumflex, whereas there was no significant disease into the right coronary artery. The patient had multiple comorbidities and was turned down for coronary bypass craft surgery. He had an intraortic balloon pump placed in the right femoral artery and was referred for complex percutaneous coronary intervention. These are the 14 steps of PCI and we'll discuss briefly how each of those steps apply into this particular patient. In terms of planning, the patient was not a good surgical candidate. If we had to do stents, then the DK crust technique would be the one we would choose based on the good outcome data. However, the first step is to exclude stent under expansion. And then regarding the need of support, um, impeller should generally not be used with the core valve because there is a risk of fracture of the impeller. And uh, the patient had a normal ejection fraction. Therefore, the plan was to just keep the balloon pump that was in place. So this is a patient, a patient who has an unprotected left main lesion. He has unstable angina, so he does need revascularization. He does have um, disease into the left main that involves the bifurcation. It is a good bifurcation lesion. He is not a good surgical candidate. And uh, for cases like this, DK CRAS is the preferred approach, if at least we believe the results of the DK CRAS 5 trial. We also performed right heart catheterization that demonstrated a wedge pressure of 19 and an array of 11, therefore solidifying our approach to not use a, an additional hemodynamic support, but just leave the balloon pump in place. Because of significant PAD, we decided to not use femoral axis, but instead to use the radial axis. And we started from the radial, from the right radial side, which actually ended up being a poor choice because after a prolonged period of time, we were unable to engage the left main coronary artery despite using multiple catheters. We eventually changed to the left, and then we were able to advance a JL4 guide catheter through the core valve into the left main. We were able to wire both the LAD and the circumflex with a Sion Blue as well as a Minamo. For bifurcations, we like to use wires with different color. The Sion Blue has a black color, the Minamo has a green color, so it's a little easier to differentiate the two guide wires. The first step was to do intravascular imaging that confirmed that the patient had neointima and the stents actually were well expanded to start with. So we decided to first predilate, so we dilated the circumflex and then predilated the LAD, which uh, had a good result. The balloon expanded very well. And then we decided to do the DK crush. In many cases, when there are two layers of stent, we do not want to place an additional layer of stent, but this was the exception because we did not believe we could get a good result given the extensive disease into the LAD as well as the left main. These are the 17 steps of DK crush. We decided to use the circumflex as the main vessel and the LAD as the side branch. Based on the ease of rewiring, it was easier to get into the LAD than to take the band that um, led into the circumflex. And again, that's always something to remember that what is the main vessel and the side branch depends on the specifics of the lesion. With the vessel that is easier to rewire uh, being selected as the side branch. So we deployed uh, the stand, we crushed it, then we were able to rewire and perform the first kissing balloon inflation. That showed uh, a good expansion of both balloons. We then placed a 4.5 by 18 millimeter resolute onyx tragaluting stand from the left main into the circumflex, jailing the LAD. And we did have some difficulty rewiring into the LAD. The this is the second rewiring, so we want to go from a distal strut, and eventually, after some attempts, we were able to advance a workhorse on blue wire into the LED. 
perform the second kissing balloon inflation with a good expansion of the balloons and a nice final result both in geographically as well as by intravascular ultrasound. We had to remove the guide extension we used earlier on in order to be able to do the kissing balloon inflations, but again, a nice result was achieved. And then we removed the guide catheter under fluoroscopy to make sure we did not have any issues with entrapment of the guide catheter. So in summary, there were several interesting points and lessons from this case. The first one is that engagement in patients with prior TAVR, especially with self-expanding valves, can be challenging. The right radial is probably not the best approach for those patients. Left radial or femoral are preferred. In our case, the right radial did not work, but we were able to successfully engage and perform the PCI through the left radial. In terms of engagement, we did use a six French JL4 guide. We never use JL4 guide catheters for PCI in vessels without previous um, valves, but in this case, the JL4 minimizes the risk of the guide being entrapped. We also used a guide extension to facilitate engagement. However, we had to remove it in order to perform kissing balloon inflations because otherwise we would not be able to fit two balloons through a six French guide catheter extension. This was an instant restenotic lesion in the LAD, so imaging is of critical importance to determine the mechanism of restenosis, which in this case was neointima. We did place another drug glute extent, but brachytherapy was recommended to this patient given the multiple episodes of instant restenosis. And finally, for treating the distal left main bifurcation, this was a Medina 111 uh, bifurcation. We decided to use the DK CRAS technique given the good results from the DK CRAS 5 trial. And uh, we used the circumflex as the main vessel and the LAD as the side branch because the LAD was easier to rewire. This led to a nice final result. Thank you.